in the scheme of hours, we don't train as runners as much as many other athletes do. And what it comes down to is running is the highest impact sport you can do. It's really one of the only sports where you are truly 90% of the time injuring yourself rather than being injured. Originally, I was a part of a team called the Nike Oregon Project, and the situation really wasn't good for me. It wasn't really a mesh. And then as soon as I left the team, I kind of did the classic, like, now I'm going to do something totally different. And I ended up getting hurt, and for a couple years was in a little bit of an injury cycle. Really what it came down to was, I had this like need to like get back and so rather than let my body have the time it needed to heal and to recover, um, I was push, 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 push. muscular tightness or pain, but it's just been throwing off my gait. So it's that it's that like double-edged sword where running will make it stronger and I want to be able to run on it, but at the same time I don't want to be running incorrectly and as a result hurt something else. When I first planned the trip, I thought I'd be out here getting in a ton of intense mileage and training and in retrospect doing the same exact thing I did every single time and then ended up hurt with. But instead I came out and I've been having what's probably partly like nervy issues and I went to a physical therapist that everybody out here works with. He was able to kind of get down to the bottom of a few things after having some injuries that were almost always on the left leg, I was kind of leaving myself predisposed to some kind of muscular imbalances that were affecting the way I was running. It kind of becomes the like chicken or the egg argument, like did I have a weak leg and that's why I was hurt? Was I getting hurt, making the leg like, weaker? Probably a little bit of both. But my new mantra is for the next couple months is to become an athlete again, not just a runner decreasing my miles a little bit, going a little bit more just based on how my body feels and upping more like circuit training and strength work and all the other things that are probably going to make me more durable. And I would be totally lying if I was not totally jealous when going on the long run groups and everybody's just killing their 16 mile run. It takes a level of patience to have to retrain your body, but even when I get a little self-pitying in the back of my mind. I really know this is this is the way to get back. When it's all said and done, when I am running, I love it. And yes, the competition side of it is amazing and totally fuels a fire underneath me, but just the literal act of being out there and in perfect form and just being fluid, I, I don't think there's really anything like it. I think it's so intense. Our sport is every other sport's punishment. That if you can find a joy in that, it's it's amazing. And there's a certain point where it's like, first off, my peak self as an athlete, whenever, wherever that happens, will not be my peak self as a person. I'm gonna be a 60-year-old lady someday, and I hope she's way more kick-ass than whatever my best runner self ever was. The way you ultimately pick yourself up is not living in the future, not living in the past. There's a great Winnie the Pooh quote, and obviously I'm gonna quote Winnie the Pooh for this. Past is history, the future is a mystery, the present is a gift, that's why they call it the present. And I think that really, there's such truth to that.